Charles Morgan describes the Aeromax as a piece of automotive theatre, a car that causes a stir wherever it goes, that turns heads even though it's a few years old. It's a car that makes people happy. Only a hundred were ever made though, so you'd be lucky to see one at a motor show, let alone see one on the road. Morgan now though has a new take on automotive theatre. It's called the Aero Coupe and it's quite the experience. I think the Aero Coupe is one of the most beautiful cars ever made. It barely differs from its predecessor, though its rear window line and boot have been tweaked. Its design harks back to a time when big sills, swooping wheel arches and boat-like rear ends were in vogue. It's taken inspiration from a time when the Ultima car was something that announced its owner's arrival, rather than being an anonymous box designed to ferry disinterested commuters to jobs they despise. I like to think that the Aero Coupe is the future, as designed by sci-fi writers in the 1940s. The Aero Coupe does have a bit of future tech on it. The Morgan Aero 8, to which this is closely related, was the first Morgan to use a bonded aluminium chassis, much like a Lotus Elise. It's a third of the weight of steel, so it offers better power to weight and fuel economy. Also, its new rear gives it a bit more go than the sainted Aeromax. It seems the fastest Morgans shy away from the traditional and look forward. That lightweight pegs it at around 1200 kilos, which is Lotus Exige S territory. And Morgan's found a pretty kick-ass engine to hook up to its featherweight chassis. It's a 4.8 litre V8 sourced from BMW and it kicks out 367 brake horsepower and 370 torques if you measure them in pounds and feet. Now top Trump's fans will like the fact that it will do 0 to 62 in just 4.5 seconds and go on to 170 miles an hour. Power is all well and good, but how does something so design-driven make you feel? Does it handle well? Does it make you feel good? So the driving experience, yeah, there are a few flaws with it, especially when you compare it to cars made by the likes of, say, Porsche, who have millions and millions and millions of euros of R&D budget. Where a Porsche is more precision engineered, the Morgan is a bit rough around the edges. For example, the steering is very, very heavy. You do get great feedback. It is power assisted, but again, it is quite heavy. Plus, the brakes are a touch spongy, which is a little unnerving. None of the flaws, the fact the interior is a little bit rough and ready and very, very flat and there's BMW bits and you know, you do get some odd noises and odd creaks all over the place. That doesn't matter though because Morgans themselves are experiences. This is a wonderful thing to drive. It makes it so much more rewarding. You know, you get the noise of this beautiful sonorous V8 bouncing off every building. It's not been silenced to make any emissions people or noise people happy. It makes noise because it can and my god that noise is just unbelievable. It sounds like an old school car should. It looks like an old school car should. You can feel the passion that's gone into it. You know that someone has spent a long time bolting bits of it together. And that makes it really quite magical. The look of the thing, the sound of the thing, the feel of the thing. It's something I'm never gonna forget.
Like its predecessor, the Aero Coupe is a piece of automotive theatre. It's a car that people buy when they want to experience their drive and share that experience with others. It's a piece of design that the world really would be poorer without. Yes, there are other more accomplished sports cars out there, but they're there in comparative abundance. And while Morgan will make more than 100 Aero Coupes if customers demand it, it'll still be pretty rare. And that makes it really rather special. So that was our look at the Morgan Aero Coupe. And while you're here, why not take a look at what Charles Morgan had to say about his very own Aeromax by clicking here. Or if you prefer something big, British and brutish, take a look at what we thought of the fearsome Jaguar XKRS by clicking here. And while you're here though, don't forget to subscribe by clicking down here.